Hey there, self-care warriors. Welcome back to Self-Care Haven. Um, I just wanted to give a big thank you. Um, many blessings, hugs, and much love to you guys um, for your support of my last video and my article. And um, a lot of good things did come out of that article, which I didn't really talk about. Um, I did get a lot of letters from survivors all around the world um, saying how much they resonated with the article. Um, some of them were waking up for the first time, uh, saying that it saved their lives um, and they were starting to finally see what was going on and they finally had the words to articulate um, the abuse that they had suffered. Uh, and another great thing that came out of that article was that I got to connect um, with a really, really amazing figure, um, Vincent Guastamacchia. He is a former NYPD detective and hostage negotiator with over uh, 1,000 investigations under his belt. Um, and he's done everything you can think of from counterterrorism to kidnappings to hostage situations. Um, to robberies, assaults, everything that you can think of. Um, and he, he was a very successful detective and private investigator. Um, and now he has his own private investigation agency called Perimeter Agency. And um, we actually connected because he shared uh, my uh, article on his website. And then I thought it would be a great idea that uh, he get connected with mental health news radio host Kristen Walker, who is my favorite show, radio show host ever. Um, and she's interviewed me before. You guys have probably seen the interview. Um, and they just make such an, an amazing dynamic duo in this interview that they did together that I wanted to share a preview. Um, because Vincent has such you know, a wealth of knowledge and experience regarding how these pathological personalities act, especially in high, the high conflict situations that he's been in. And because Christian also brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to the table as well. Um, and, you know, this show has helped so many survivors reclaim uh, their lives. And this interview in particular is one of the most empowering, uh, brilliant interviews that I've heard so far. Um, it's so honest, it's so candid, it's so raw, and it's so truthful. It's just filled with amazing truth. Um, and I wanted to share this interview with you guys, so I'm going to leave in this video uh, a 10 to 15 minute preview of the interview so that you guys can get a uh, glimpse of what they're talking about. And uh, if you're interested in seeing the full length interview, which I highly recommend that you carve out some time, um, you know, have a cup of coffee um, or a glass of wine <laughs> and, you know, listen to this interview. Um, it is just so empowering. It's so amazing. And I, I have no doubt that it's going to save some lives. Um, and please share the interview as widely as possible so that everyone can hear it. Um, you know, all of the survivors of abuse that are currently being abused or survivors of abuse who have escaped their abusive situation, um, you know, whatever the context, or maybe even just someone who hasn't even been in a relationship with an abuser but knows someone who has, this interview can possibly help them. Um, and his agency does help people all over the globe, even though he is based in New York. Um, and he does have uh, experience helping families with high conflict pathological personalities such as malignant narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths. So if you think this interview will help, please continue to listen um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Remember, if you want to access the full length interview, you can do so by clicking in uh, the link in the description box. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon, uh, self care warriors and much love and blessings to you. Um, until then, take care. Welcome to Mental Health News Radio, your source for information about mental health providers and the work they do in the world, the organizations that support their work, volunteers, and mental health consumers. This show is brought to you by EverythingEHR.com, devoted to helping mental health organizations find the best electronic health records software and revenue cycle management solutions. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. This is Kristen Sinanta Walker, host of Mental Health News Radio and CEO of Everything EHR. Today, our guest is Vincent Guastamacchia. He owns Perimeter Agency in New York. We talk narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, and empaths during this show, and it was one of our best. So please stick around for the whole thing. 
Vincent is a retired detective and hostage negotiator with the New York City Police Department. He has worked in everything from narcotics to hostage negotiation. Getting into the mind of a predator is something he is very familiar with and now devotes his career to helping victims. As a member of the New York City's hostage negotiation team, Vincent was present at the scenes of multiple hostage negotiation situations, attempted suicides, barricaded perpetrator scenes, and emotionally disturbed persons' cases. As a negotiator, it was his job and his responsibility to initiate communication with the individuals, develop a rapport, and persuade them to consider alternative options instead of acting on their original intention. Vincent successfully negotiated 27 hostage situations without injury or loss of life. Enjoy this one, folks. As an empath, I got a big empathic hit from the brick wall of truth that is Vincent. I can see why his agency is so successful. I think you will sense this as well. Enjoy. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us on Mental Health News Radio. Thank you, Kristen. Pleasure to be on. Now, I uh, was referred to you by Shahida Arabi, who I love. She's been a guest a few times, and she's part of my tribe of warrior, uh, empathic, narc abuse fighting people. (laughs) When I read uh, Shahida's article, uh, it really fascinated me, and I really wanted to help more on the topic. Yeah, and I I love that because, as I told you before we started recording, um, we have so many more male listeners now um, who have been in abusive relationships themselves um, with female narcissists and also in a, you know, a a relationship with a male narcissist as well. And what I find with people is once you sort of meet that one that brings this awareness to your knees, they're just awful enough (laughs) that it brings the awareness of what this is to your knees, then you can kind of, as you study, you realize, I've had a lot of these kind of people in my life. I just didn't know what they were. Have you found that? What, what we find is it really takes a, a traumatic event for the victim to understand what they're facing. Right. Uh, they need to be, it needs to be presented in such a way where they believe that they, they, they see it themselves and not being told it. Mm. So how we how we like to go about helping victims, and we first understand that it, when it's a woman coming to us, that it's a man um, causing these problems, and they may not trust us uh, as right. as we feel they should. So what I like to do is just lead them down the path of let's identify, let's let's hope to um, diagnose what we're facing, and the only way we could really win anything is if we really know the game. And what are the rules of the game, and, and what, what should we expect from our opponent? And when you can kind of put all of these things on the table, it's real easy to fix the problem. How long does it, I mean, well, in the situations that you're dealing with, we're talking about high, high conflict situations, correct? correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so in the worst case, let's take, uh, so I, I'm, a, I'm a retired NYPD hostage negotiator. How we're taught is to quickly form a bond with the person on the other end of the phone, the opposite side of the door, or face-to-face with us. Quickly form that bond, and that, and let's figure out why we are here. What's the problem? Once we diagnose the problem, even a, a person in the worst possible moment in their life where they feel they have no options, they're even contemplating taking their own life, which suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Right. Once, once we diagnose and, and once we get to that point, we know what we're dealing with, even the worst situations end in less than four hours. The longest negotiation, I think, on record is 50, 60 hours. Now, that's the worst, but and that's not even by average. Average is four hours. So if, if we can take the worst possible situation and pres- uh, provide a resolution to it, we could easily help someone that's really, it, they're facing a mountain, but it's not as big of a mountain as they really think it is. Mm. How do you deal with is this a lot of what happens with a victim, of you know, whether it's in a hostage negotiation situation or a domestic uh, situation, the amount of... Uh, 
trauma bonding that's gone on, very, you know, akin to Stockholm syndrome, uh, they are completely brainwashed in many ways. Um, and winding them out of that is very, very difficult. How do you, you know, even begin that process with a victim rather than a perpetrator? I feel to reverse the process, you have to have overwhelming amounts of fact. Um, and, and once you start representing the facts in such a way, it, 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 women or victims have no other choice than to really see what's been going on. And that's how you slowly begin to reverse the effects of, let's say, the Stockholm Syndrome. Mm. Yeah, that's the part that I, you know, and I've certainly been in that situation uh, before. And I was raised by um, by a psychopath. My biological father was one. So I learned how to dance around uh, yeah yeah it's it, you learn i mean this is why you're probably good at what you do i'm really good at figuring out who exactly it is that i'm dealing with it may take me a little bit but um i figure it out and i'm really good at dancing away from danger like i can just feel it in my bones Oop! i just watched this person snap there's some rage there i don't want to be a part of that i'm out and i think uh, a lot of people just don't have that skill set because maybe they weren't raised around these kind of people you know and that is 100% true. And then the other factor is people are afraid of change. Like, I understand that this is terrible where I'm at. However, what's on the other side? I, I don't know it. I'm afraid of it. I fear change. I have no way of providing for myself. But there are so many programs and so many agencies that will help you. Now, will it be a change of your current lifestyle as far as materialistic sometimes or mm -hmm. convenience or comfort? But the psychological effects that the current situation is leaving you in are far worse than being displaced for six months right. until you're able to regain your ground and get back on your feet. Well, there's so, there's so much out there about no contact, and I, I can't stress enough to people how important that is. I, I say it gets rid of the voodoo panani that's <laughs> hanging around in your psyche. Uh, because the more you're away from this person and the energy they put out and the tactics they put out, uh, the more you, you can hear the truisms about what was really going on. Correct. What you're facing with, with let's say, narcissists, it's never their fault. Oh, and they'll come up with 9,000 different ways to put it back on you. Absolutely. Now, if, if you remove the audience, the comedian or the villain or the perpetrator has no effect on you, so do not give them an audience. Remove the audience, hang up the phone, leave the room. We understand that the consequences may be damaging, but not life-threatening, not ending. It will actually improve the situation you're at, so I, I agree with you completely. Remove the audience, and they have no voice. That's fascinating, and I, they're, always, they're very good at they're the victim. They can be just spectacularly selfish, unbelievably selfish, entitled, and so on, and offload all of their pain and self-loathing onto you. And when you've had enough, I've seen this happen with me again, you know, throughout my life. I've been, uh, you know, had, a, had my weak spots for these people because, you know, I was raised in it. Um, but, and there's always a new one that'll come along and I'm like, oh, there's another childhood wound I need to work on healing because this one got in. <laughs> Right. But I um, I noticed that at the end of it, even though they've been horribly painful to you, in the end, it's always that they're the one that is hurt and confused by your behavior. Right. Well, when people say whatever they need to say to get what they want at that current moment, it really is not how they feel. So when, mm. for example, I, I, I remember dealing with someone who said, I don't care what you do. I just want you. I don't care if you date. I don't care if you do anything. But tell me the truth. Who would want to see the person that they absolutely want and they're just saying whatever they need to say to get what they want? And now when that person does take them up on their word and say, okay, well, I'm going to go out with so-and-so tomorrow night, and then that person flips the script. Well, you can't go out with them. It's not what I want. It's not what I want you to do. Well, you said I can, so who's right. wrong here? And then there will be like, why did you do that? Why Am I not good enough? No, I'm just abiding by everything you said. But it would be flipped like that, and then you're wrong. 
that no matter what the person will say, if they're willing to say or do anything to get you, they're willing to say or do anything to make themselves right and to keep you. That is fascinating. And we just did a show about triangulation, word salad, and gaslighting. And that fits, the triangulation part doesn't, but we can get into that. But the word salad and the gaslighting, I've found that where I'm speaking to someone and they are telling me whatever it is they think I want to hear in order to keep me giving them what they are wanting from me, which is usually empathic capital. And I will, and because I'm a big time empath, it's real easy for me to just go right into that mode. But um, I start being detective because, you know, that's how I was raised. And I go back and say, well, you know, last week you said this, and that was to get me to keep me hanging on. And this week you're saying the complete opposite. Which time were you lying or were you lying both times? Right. And most of the time they were lying both times. Yep, absolutely. How do you talk to a victim that's in this and, you know, they're dealing with that word salad and the gaslighting and, you know, they, they don't even know what's real anymore because they, the complete opposite of what they were told last time is now, you know, or they're completely dismissed and invalidated. Um, I never said that. I didn't feel that way. You took it the wrong way. There's, you know, a million different phrases that are used by, by narcissists and manipulators. What, what we like to do, um, we, we, it, it's dealing with victims. Never victimize the victim any further than mm -hmm. they've already been. Thank you. So it's it's a slow process. It's and, and it's if somebody calls me to help to, uh, for example, to deal with violence in the home, and they really need to get out, and they're afraid, and the police have come, and the, your significant other just charms the hell out of them, and they leave, mm -hmm. and now you're still stuck in that same position. It takes a while for me to develop the bond with uh, the victim to to gain that trust, and and I won't go into one second of direction until I feel that that person has a trust. And if they can't develop that trust with a male, I'll refer them to one of our uh, female agents, mm. and we try to gain the trust that way. And 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 it really are just triggers or, or what you what resonates with you is it a male are you completely afraid of everything male we understand that so what we try to do is take it slow really diagnose the problem point out the solutions or, or offer several different options uh, but it, it, there's nothing that you can do other than a slow progress a slow process forgive me and and, and really getting down to the point and, and, and gaining the clients or gaining the victims respect and confidence so they really feel that you can help guide them to a, a resolution. Yeah, and that's rough. Um, let's let's take a minute for our listeners to know. I know that they'll hear my intro of you, but let's talk a, you know, a little bit about you know, what it is that you do and what your firm does. So I'm a retired detective from the NYPD, and I was a hostage negotiator with the NYPD. I, I took the skill sets and, and uh, the skill sets of all of the colleagues that I worked with, and I, uh, I formed Perimeter Agency. And what Perimeter Agency does, it's, it's a private investigation and security agency, and we provide uh, solutions. We provide uh, recourse. We provide protection to everybody. And now we specifically geared toward the family, in home. Um, we, we, what we, we, we just want to help people dealing with crisis. Mm. And we use de-escalation techniques and, um, and really use our skills that we honed during our career dealing with the worst of the worst throughout the city of New York. And we offer that to people who really need help. It's fantastic. Um, I was saying to you before we hit record, too, that I love that you are so bold in your statements about narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, that you'd even put that information on your website, because a lot of a lot of the big issue with this epidemic, and it is an epidemic, we know the fact that it is because our shows that we where we talk about this subject are downloaded all over the globe. These are the shows that put my show on the map. We didn't do anything special 
like extra marketing or pay anything. I mean, this is all advocacy work. Um, my consulting firm pays for it. We did nothing special to make those shows stand out and be more popular or be more visible. They just became that way. And they're played in right. coda groups all over. <clears throat> we have a, a big coda group in New Zealand, for goodness sake, that plays our shows on this topic. So it is an epidemic, but there's a little, still a little bit left over of that. Well, keep it on the down low. So I love the fact that you're not keeping it on the down low. The, the direct approach is always best. The beating around the bush does not solve any problems. Let's identify the solution. What are we facing? How do we deal with it? present a plan, execute that plan, and hopefully resolve the issue. Uh, beating around the bush does nothing for anyone. Yeah, it really doesn't, and especially for this type of abuse. I mean, I've, I've worked in situations where there's someone who has been pulled into a cult or I'm called into, and I grew up around Scientology, so <laughs> I know all wow. about that cult-like yeah. mentality. Um, and I've also been asked to come into corporations where there's a narcissist at the helm or uh, someone in that they can't quite pinpoint who it is. And I have to become that person's friend and figure out what they're what what's going to get them out of that organization with as le a little carnage as possible. <laughs> That's amazing. And it's hard. It's, it's hard Very because you st I being an empath, I start feeling sorry for them and you know they're able to even pull me in and i need to allow that in order to figure out what's driving them but i have right. to shake it off at the end of the day and go Whew, okay so how do you deal with that because maybe you don't have to go there i do i've got to feel their stuff in order to really know them and then i know it's weird to sit there and be like i am right now feeling sorry for this person i can see how manipulative they are because i can feel it the only way to get to the truth. Um, and when you're dealing with people suffering from these personality disorders, it, that is the most difficult topic to approach is the truth. Mm -hmm. They'll say whatever they need to say to keep the truth from revealing. So who would admit I'm a narcissist? Right. No one ever says, hey, no one ever wears a shirt, narcissist, psychopath, right. sociopath. So to get someone to admit, now, now you have all of your psychological uh, defenses preventing that from occurring. So you have to form a bond. And, and, and I've sat across um, interview tables in, in the interrogation room in police department investigations for a three-time murderer, someone who murdered a girl with his bare hands. Right. If I would sit at that table, across the table, just glaring at him like he should be glared at, we accomplish nothing. You almost have to be pulled in, you have to relate, you have to try to understand the person's mindset, and only then will you ever have a chance of scratching the surface of the truth? Right. If you don't do it, and then what you have to do is quickly revert out of it, or you really will be affecting your own personality.